server-side template injection with information disclosure via user-supplied objects. So if you're not familiar with SSTI, I linked my first video down below that you can check out to get you familiar with discovery and exploitation methodology related to SSTI. But let's jump right into the lab. So if you look at the lab description, we need to use the credentials for the content manager user. And the whole goal of this lab is to get the secret key of the framework. So let's go ahead and authenticate as content manager. Paste the password here. And first things first, whenever it comes to SSTI, we're looking for anywhere our user controlled input is reflected. So we can change our email, but our email is not reflected here. So we'll go back home. Let's take a look at this first product. This sends a get request to a product ID. So that's user controlled input there, but we do see edit template. And then from here, we actually see the uh, example template itself. So we can actually update this and click preview and it should actually show us the results of the, the template as it passes through the templating engine. So we see these double curly brackets, so we could assume that it might be some type of Python framework. Um, we can try to reference something that doesn't exist, but I don't know if that's gonna actually throw an error. So let's go ahead and jump to hack tricks and see if we could find a Python uh, Python templating engine. I know Jinja is the first one that pops to mind. This is Jinjava, but we can go ahead and we can try this payload here and see if it works. We'll copy that. Go back to our lab and paste that. Preview. And we see we get an application error. And it looks like in this case, we're actually dealing with Django templating engine. So we'll go back and let me go back one more so we have these products here. So I don't believe Hacktrix has any documentation for Django. So what we'll do is we'll use Google. So we'll look up Django SSTI. Um, let's go ahead and use this Cobalt resource here. And then from here, let's search for Django. And it looks like they're using the debug payload here. And what this does is actually, if, if it actually is rendered appropriately, it'll actually return all the objects that we have access to within this templating engine. So let's go ahead and preview that. And we can see that it did work. In this case, we have access to the product object with a name, price, or name, price, and stock, it looks like, which is what we expected from the original templates. So that's nice to see that. We also have access to the settings object. So if we go ahead and delete this debug and we try to call settings, let's see what happens here. We click preview. And the application returns with user settings holder. So what we need to do is we need to actually look at the Django documentation to see what settings can actually access, the settings object. And what this settings object is actually accessing is the settings of the Django framework that's being used here. So what we could do is we could actually access any of these settings in theory. So if we grab admins, for example, we can call settings.admins. And when we preview that, we'll see we get an empty array. And if we look at the Django documentation, the default is this empty list. So this is expected. So from here, we can try to look through these settings and see if any of these settings actually disclose or divulge sensitive data. If we go back to the lab description, we're looking for a secret key. So what we can do is we can use control F to search for secret. And you can see there's actually a secret key value here. So in here, it's a secret key and it's used for cryptographic signing. So in this case for generating session tokens, so it's a very sensitive key. So we'll copy this and we'll call settings.secret key, click preview. And you can see we have a value here. When we try to submit that solution, let's see if this is the valid secret key. In this case, it says it's not. So we'll see if we can delete the rest of the template just so we just get that value. Copy, paste that one more time, see if that worked. And we solved the lab. So in this case, again, when we have SSTI, we wanna find user controlled input. Two, we wanna enumerate what type of templating engines in use, whether with application errors or by sending a payload that would, when evaluated, let us deduce what templating engine it is based off the syntax. In this case, we had the application error that told us it was Django. And with Django, or in our third step of exploitation of SSTI, we wanna see what we can do. So we use the debug, the debug function to actually return the objects we have control over. And instead of getting RCE, we just discovered that we had access to the settings object and we can access anything from that settings object. And we got that secret key that way. So with SSTI, it doesn't always have to result in RCE. You can leverage it to access data and disclose information that might be sensitive that you could leverage for other attacks. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways, so I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video, or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.